welcome to the Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly fifth weekend virtual experience. Join us now from the sanctuary of the Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly with Bishop Robert D. Hood. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. We are so glad to have you with us this evening as we are beginning this night of worship and praise. Our scripture this evening is coming from Romans chapter 8 beginning at the very first verse. And it reads like this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you will, bow your heads for a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for meeting us here in this place of worship. We ask you now, Holy Spirit, to come and be in our midst. Bless all over this land and country right now. Bless the hearers under the sound of my voice. Bless your men servant who shall deliver. We yield this service into your hands. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Come on to put your hands together right where you are. And if you know there's no God like our God Jehovah, why don't you join in and sing with us? Oh, oh, oh. servant Moses righteousness being restored oh and these are the days of your harvest the fields are as wide in the world and we are your laborers in your vineyard preparing the world Righteousness being restored. Oh, and these are the days of your harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Everybody say. Jehovah, yeah. There's no God like Jehovah, yeah. Can you 
now help me say there's nobody like there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no There's no God like Jehovah. There's no Nobody. No, 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 nobody. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody. Like my Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Praise God. We thank God for this opportunity to come into your presence, and we just thank God for what he's done. And we also want to give God praise for being the God that he is. As we bring you the word today from the Goldsboro Riley Assembly, we just want to share the word of God so that we can see what God has for us in these last days. We're going to ask that you bow your heads as we begin our service. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come into your presence, God, we invite you now to allow your Holy Spirit to move in our midst. God, we thank you right now, God, because it's your word that we stand in the need of. Lord, we believe that everyone that's watching, Father God, that you can allow your Holy Spirit to come and envelope into our heart, God. We just ask that you allow a special anointing to come into the lives of those that are depressed, those that stand in need of a blessing. God, it's by your power that you're able to make all these miracles take place. We give your name the glory and the honor, and we commit this service unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to ask that you join us today in the word of God, that you turn with us to the book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, starting at the 12th verse. The book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, and starting at the 12th verse. And while we're standing here, we want to give honor to our bishops and our vice bishop. Diedrich Ronnie Hood, Diedrich Hood, and we just thank God along with also with Bishop Rodney Parker, and we just thank God for this opportunity to bring the word of God. Amen. We thank God for such leaders that God has allowed to be in a situation they've never been in before, but we thank God for the leadership that he's given them and for what God is doing through them. Amen. If you have Ephesians, the sixth chapter, starting at the 12th verse, we want you to read, start with us. For we wrestle not against blood, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We thank God, amen, for you that are here today. And we want to leave a word that God has given us. Amen. It's a word that God has dropped into our spirit. 
with a subject entitled Standing on the Word. Standing on the Word. As we search the news by way of the paper, television, computers, we're looking for details of calamity in the land. Some people get a thrill off and listening and watching for bad things. Each bit of information has an effect on our thought process as to whether it's good news or bad news or whether we're to disregard it as a substance of no value. However, if something that affects us though, especially if it's bad, and what can I do to change it? Because people see and hear the bad news, it affects them to the point they get disappointed, they sometimes reach that point where they're not able to sleep and they're wondering when is things going to get better. There was a man named Augustus Morgan. He was a mathematician in 1866 and also Captain Edwards A. Murphy, an engineer from the Edwards Air Force Base in 1949. They worded a phrase that Black people knew all about it, even though we weren't able to verbalize it and put it into language that we can understand. But they made the statement, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And it's called Murphy's Law. And sometimes we're looking at what's going on in the land and we see what takes place. And it seems like they say we're going to give you a stimulus package. And it seems like that uh, we're going to help you get your jobs and we see unemployment and we see calamity all over the land. And it seems like that somebody is lying to us because the words that they say don't stand. But we know that there's somebody that has written a word because it's inspired in the minds of those that serve God. And it's learning to stand on the word of God. Because if I stand on the word of God, I will not be disappointed. But for those that are such as our forefathers that knew about this, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Slaves that have been in captivity knew this from the fact. But it was something that made them to be strong. No matter what took place, no matter what plan has come about, God has given them the ability to have a relationship with God. And they learned by singing the old songs of Zion and being able to give God the glory whenever things did go bad. And they knew that they had something on the inside that made them to continue to give God some praise. Somebody ought to give God some praise. For those that we also see that they learned that the word of God, even God's promises that were made from the past about our future was more reliable than those brilliant minds of today when they begin to share things with us about when it's going to get better, when we can go back into church, whenever we're going to be able to do this, we can open up our ability to commune like we used to. But all we see is that whenever the enemy has started what is going on, we now can't go to church, the fellowship in church. We can't go and visit those loved ones that we do love. Even when we have loved ones that are now being funeralized, yet we are able to give God the praise because in spite of it all, God's word is going to stand true. In the book of Numbers, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Or if he's spoken it, shall he not make it good? I'd rather stand on the word of God, whom I've never seen, than the quicksand of a word spoken by a man that I see every day. Reason being because the word which was spoken to us by Paul in Romans the 13th chapter says, and that knowing that the time, that, that now is a high time to awaken up out of our sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. So we see that something is going on in the land. We see that what is taking place is letting us know that God is making a move. And we got to stand on the truth of what God's word is because now is the appointed time. Now is a high time to give God the glory and wait and stand still for the moving of God. We look at Michigan. We see in Michigan they had the dam that broke and on the town became flooded. We see major rain floods and, and also the, the car manufacturers are now having problems with unemployment. And then in addition to all this, they have a pandemic. So we look at all that we are going through and we somehow or another don't have a realization that God is yet moving by his word. 
Whenever we see, we got to understand that when God spoke the word, that there is no power but of God. And the powers that be are ordained of God. So even though it seems like that we have people in it, political position that our leaders God is yet the one that has all the power they're only able to move by what God say that they can do and we got to realize that God don't make a mistake we got to stand on the word of God because God is getting ready to do something let somebody say amen, amen. then we see in Romans 8 chapter for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, no matter what it takes, no matter what is taking place, no matter how bad the pain is, no matter how bad the hurt is, God can make me a good soldier. Philippians, the first chapter and the sixth verse, let us know, being confident of this very thing. That he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. See, sometimes God does some things and he'll leave us a sign. Sometimes he'll leave us a word. But the bottom line is God is looking at you while you're going through. And he's looking at the ones that's willing to lean on that word, which is not changing. When he speaks this word, God is doing what he said he was going to do. And God is able to let the word come to pass that that he's spoken. I remember reading a scripture about the word of a man in the Bible named Hiel. Hiel is just mentioned one time in the scriptures. The Bible says that Hiel began to try to build the city again that was taken down where, Jer where Jericho was. And he said that whenever he built the pour the foundation, that he lost his oldest son. And then when he built the gates, he lost his youngest son. See, about 300 years earlier, whenever the children walked around the walls of Jericho seven times, whenever Joshua gave a word, said if anybody tried to rebuild this city, he said they're going to lose their eldest child whenever they pour the foundation and whenever they try to put up the gates, they're going to use their lung, use, lose their youngest one. And so we see that God's word that was spoken by a man of God over three or four hundred years earlier was still coming to pass. I'm telling you, God's word is not going nowhere. You got to stand on God's word because it's the only thing that can hold us up. Somebody need to give God some praise. We thank God for the word. See that sometimes we see that God leaves us a word, but he sometimes leaves us a sign, a sign of promise of just as good as a word of promise. When we look at Cain, a lot of people may not know this, but Cain had a situation. Cain became the first murderer known to mankind. And he said that, you know, when he killed his brother because he was jealous of his brother. And the Bible says that Whenever God came looking for him, says, where is your brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? And because of what he's done, God said, I hear his blood crying out from the very soil where you buried his body. Then he said, because of this, I have put a curse on you. You love growing things. I'm going to make it now so that you will not be able you will not be able to grow anything of substance. He said, in fact, I, I need for you to get out of my face. And Cain sat there and he talked to God. He said, wait a minute, Lord. You've driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And they that find me is going to slay me. And then God says in the word, he said, therefore, I'm going to put a mark on you, which is a sign of protection. Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. 
In other words, God said, now I'm going to put this mark on you. And whenever you look at this, whenever anybody see him, this is going to be my protection where nobody's going to be able to touch him. So that means whenever he went into another part and started his life all over again, somehow or another, they're going to see a mark that was upon him. But that mark is really nothing but the word of God being maintained. He says, you can't touch this man because if you do, the punishment that I had for him is going to be on you sevenfold. Somehow or another, we got to learn to stand on the word like Cain did because Cain went away in confidence knowing that God was going to protect him. Ah, hallelujah. And then we see Moses. Moses, there was a sign. So we see what it is standing on the word. Sometimes it can be the word, but sometimes it can be just a sign. Whenever God told Moses, I need for you to go talk to Pharaoh so that the people can be let go. And I want you to do everything that I tell you to do. And one of the things that Moses told Pharaoh says, what you, I want everybody to, that, that have cattle and you're part of Israel. I want you to go hide your cattle and hide everything that was so, so that whenever this big storm or this hell storm come up, nothing would happen. But to everybody that was an Egyptian, they're going to lose what they have, their cattle. And, and this is one of the things that God said he was going to do. And he said, bring your cattle in. And he said, in fact, God said, I'm going to give a sign that what I say is going to come to pass. He said, I'm going to fix it so that the dogs will not even bark at the children of Israel. He barked at the Egyptian, but God's word is so true that Moses was standing on the promises of what God said he was going to do for the children of Israel. And so what happened was he said also, I said, I got right now, I want you to understand that when it comes to the destruction that's going to be in the land, he said, I want you to make sure that you get ready because I'm getting ready to bring you out, but I need for you to know the sign. He said, because a deaf angel is getting ready to come through the land. And when it comes into the land, he's going to kill the eldest child of everybody that's not covered under the blood. I want you to get the blood and put it over the doorpost. And when you put it on the doorpost, post whenever the deaf angels come through he's going to pass over you so we see that God had a sign but see we also know there was a man named Noah Noah had the same thing God said I got to give you a sign because what he did was he said he gave them a new covenant whenever the earth had been covered with blood whenever it covered with water whenever it was flooded and it came up from the deep and it came from the heavens and whenever he did all all this God says I gotta make a new covenant with you that I will not destroy the earth anymore by water he said I gotta have a sign so the sign is proof that God's word is gonna be true he said that whenever you get there and you look in a cloud after a rainstorm you're gonna see a rainbow and when you see the rainbow when you see the rainbow, that's going to be a sign that I'll never destroy this earth anymore, that I will not destroy by water. So God said, whenever I look and I, this is what God said, when I look at the rainbow, I'll remember what I said, that I will never destroy the world no more. Whenever I look, we read about a man named Elijah. Elijah said that it ain't going going to rain for about three years and yet one day when Ahab and Jezebel didn't know about the power of our God about God's servant that God speak a word and it's going to be a hell and so Elijah said it ain't going to rain but one day when the time came Elijah told the young man he said I want you to go and go to the cliff and look and tell me what you see. The young man went and he didn't see nothing. And he told him to go back again. And when he go, 
Oh, he said, what did you see? And he went and he didn't see nothing. But yet he did it about seven times. But the last time when he went, he walked and he looked, he saw a sign. The sign was a little cloud about the size of a man's head. And this was God bringing to pass what the servant of God was saying that God is only going to let it rain when he wanted to but he chose that now is the time but I want you to know something sometimes I'm not outside where I can see a rainbow sometimes I'm not going to be where I can see a cloud sometimes I'm not going to be able to put blood on a door but I need a word down on the inside and the word is what's going to let me know that God is pleased I don't have no extra money and the pandemic has left me with no food but I'm leaning on the word says my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus then I found out in the word of God in the book of Mark the ninth chapter if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe the word brings Christ into the crisis so whenever I seem like I'm depressed whenever I don't know where my next meal is coming from when I can't see my way when the doctors give me the bad news but their license say they only have a right to practice I need a lead on that word I gotta stand on that word the Bible says in Exodus the 14th chapter it says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he shall show to you today so the spirit lets us know that God's going to give us a word he's going to give us a promise and the Lord says whenever you see there's famine in the land whenever you hear of earthquakes this is a word I remember reading in the word of God in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 it says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and I see that it's profitable for reproof it's profitable when you read the word of God when you look at that scripture and you look at it in such a way that you read it from the Greek uh, interpretation uh, what is basically said uh, that sometimes uh, when you read God's word uh, you don't understand uh, what it said uh, or what it means uh, but it lets us know uh, there's a correction uh, that's involved uh, that deals with a conviction uh, so when you read the word of God uh, with the conviction of God's word uh, I can't make no mistake People are saying, I don't understand. I think this means this. Or I think this means that. The pastor could be the word bringer into the house. When he bring the word, he bring an anointed word that God gave him from on high. He got a word for the people of God. And they say, the pastor is wrong. Because I don't think that's what the word means. You're going to sit there ain't preached not the first sermon I ain't spent no time in prayer I ain't been to school none I don't know the relationship that God got with your leader but God is using them to give an anointed word on how you're supposed to live and when things get bad in the home when the husband don't act right when the children don't act right when the job don't act right he wants somebody that's gonna stand up on the word that's gonna stand up and said I got a lot of things going on but I serve a God that says in the word when my enemy come up against me that God's going to set me down and when he set me down he going to feed me in the presence of my enemy he's going to prepare 
a meal just for me. Somebody ought to give God some praise. I know in the word of God, when God began to deal with the people of Israel, they were coming up against, I think it was the Amalekites, they were having problems. And they didn't know whether they can fight the enemy because he was too victorious. But the spirit came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. And the scripture says that the spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation. Judah and Jerusalem. It was a word for all them. Even King Jehoshaphat, who was a servant of God himself. And God spoke and told him to tell them, be not afraid nor dismayed by the season or the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Right now, wherever you're sitting and whatever God is doing in your life, he have not left you. God has taken the time to warn you ahead of time. He's taking the time to educate, to educate you if you only listen. God needs people to know his word. Stand on his word. He's not going to make no mistakes. There's something about the nature of God. It says that God is immutable, which means he's unchanging. He's omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. He's omnipresent, which means he's present everywhere. And he's omniscient, which means he knows all things. Right now, from the knowledge that God has given his shepherds, if you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, why are we taking a chance with our soul? We read your scripture where it said now it's high time. We see the television every single day. And what God is doing is warning us that he's coming soon. If you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, why not invite him into your heart right now? Why not invite him to say, Lord, I need something more. I need to stand on your word. I got to have something that's going to make me stand in the midst of these terrible times. But if you're not saved, then you have a right to be worried. Don't put your dependence on somebody that says something one day and then it's another day. When you got leaders that's overriding leaders trying to see who has the clout, God is the only one. Right now, I want you to bow your heads wherever you are. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, invite him in right now. It don't take much. God don't care how much money you got, and you don't know whether you got time to go try to ask anybody for forgiveness. We need to come just as we are because if you try to fix one thing before you come to the face of God that's your own righteousness and the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags you need to invite the Lord with what you got and let him clean you up just repeat after me say father in the name of Jesus I come before you as a sinner I need you in my life I believe that you died on Calvary's cross for my sins and that you rose again. And I believe that you saved my soul. Forgive me for what I've done wrong. And God, I give your name to praise. I believe you're sitting now on the right hand of the Father for my sins. And you said in your word, if I confess my sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. And I will be delivered. If you believe that, beloved, According to God's word, you are saved. 
God will not cast you out. We thank you, and we just ask that you continue to pray for the Goldsboro Raleigh Assembly, and we do give you the blessings of God, and we will be praying for you. Contact the Goldsboro Raleigh Assembly. Contact our webpage. Let us know that God has saved you. Let us know what God has done for you. And you will get a response. So we just thank you in Jesus' name. Precious Father, bless those that are here. And God, we believe right now that you can send an anointing that's going to last. And Father God, you can reach these people wherever they are. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing. But most of all, our God, we just thank you for saving those that may have given their life to you. Lord, we just want to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other, it reaches to me.
Friends, we've had an awesome time in service this evening. The Lord has richly blessed us through his word, and we want you to partner with us. If you've been blessed by the service on this evening and the word of God, we ask that if you will consider partnering with us and sowing your love gifts tonight, you will find on your screen our cash app information, dollar sign GRDA 2018. That's again, dollar sign GRDA 2018. If the Lord has touched your heart and this word has blessed you, we ask that you will sow into the kingdom. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. God bless you. Thank you.